North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is known for pushing the envelope with threats and bluster as he seeks to leverage his nuclear weapons program into security and economic benefits for his country. But lately he's gained notoriety for his envelopes alone. Top North Korean envoy Kim Yong-chul delivers the letter from his leader to Donald Trump. U.S. President Donald Trump on Friday declared that his on-and-off summit with Kim was on again. The announcement came after Trump posted a senior North Korean envoy at the White House and he delivered a personal letter from Kim that was inside a white envelope nearly as large as a folded newspaper. Trump has not yet revealed what was written in the letter, but he sure seemed happy to get it. A photo showed a grinning Trump holding up the envelope alongside Kim Yong-chul. The photo made rounds on social media, where theories abound about why Kim would have sent Trump what seemed like a comically oversized letter. Did Kim think Trump would share his love for lavish gestures and things grandiose? Has Kim learned the way to influence Trump is to appeal to his ego, something South Korean President Moon Jae-in seemed to try in April when he openly vouched for Trump as a candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize. I photoshopped myself with a regular-sized envelope next to Trump with his giant envelope, then made myself bigger until they matched. Pick at twitter.com slash outtag 4mhbg, Jesse McLaren, at McJesse, June 1, 2018 No one outside North Korea likely knows the real reason for the letter size. It could just be that's how Kim likes it. Moon received a letter of similar size from Kim during February's Winter Olympics in which he expressed a desire for an inter-Korean summit. Kim's to letter to Moon was personally delivered by Kim's sister and was covered by a blue folder emblazoned with a golden seal. Analysts say the gesture of sending the letter itself is part of the meticulous steps North Korea is taking to present Kim as a legitimate international statesman who is reasonable and capable of negotiating solutions and making deals. While trying to communicate its willingness to embrace Western diplomatic norms, Pyongyang has put in painstaking efforts to maintain reciprocity with Washington and Seoul, said Yong Moo Jin, a professor at the University of North Korean Studies in Seoul. Kim Yong Chul's trip to Washington was clearly a response to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's traveling to Pyongyang twice in recent weeks for pre-summit negotiations with Kim. Likewise, Kim's letter to Trump would have been a reciprocal response to Trump's own letter to Kim on May 24 that temporarily shelved the highly anticipated meeting, Jiang said. In his letter, Trump, in an uncharacteristically warm and congenial tone, said he was canceling the summit because of North Korea's harsh comments about U.S. officials. But he also told Kim, please do not hesitate to call me your right. North Korea then issued an unusually conciliatory response to Trump's letter, with senior diplomat Kim Kai Gwan saying Pyongyang had highly appreciated Trump's willingness to hold a summit, calling it a bold decision, which any other U.S. president dared not. Hours later, Trump said the summit was potentially back on. Kim's letter to Trump on Friday will probably borrow much of the language from the statement of his vice foreign minister, said Ko Yu Won, a North Korea expert at Seoul's Dongguk University. Kim would begin by praising Trump's leadership and his bold decision to build up the summit, said Ko, who is also a policy advisor to the South Korean president. will then talk about denuclearization, ending hostility and normalizing relations between the countries.